Hi everyone, um, welcome to my video today. I just made another video, but I was gonna make a second one. Um, so, because I'm feeling peaceful and good. Today was Thanksgiving, like I said in my other video. Okay, I'm just going to um, tell you a little bit. I'm gonna um, give you a little bit of my background of my life. Um, I was born in Provo, Utah, and um, my mom and dad met at BYU in Provo. Um, when I was two weeks old, they got divorced. Like, when I was, like, my mom said, like, when I was two and stuff. So I might have been, actually, like, maybe three. I don't know when you can start talking. So if I would go up to people at church and say, are you my daddy? Because... I didn't know where he was so um I was kind of sad so anyways um I had a good childhood in Provo um up until I was seven we had good my mom had a best friend and they had um she had da uh, two daughters and we were friends because they were my mom and her mom were best friends and they're still good friends to this day so we would um, do things together. Uh, my grandma lived also down in Provo, so I got to visit her. So that was good. When I was, um, how old? When I was seven, my mom got married to my stepdad and we moved um, down to um, Mountain Green. Um, that's like 15 minutes away from where I live now. And, um, so I had a lot of friends there, um, that we played a lot, and, um, I started having troubles in school, like, I would, people would call me the class clown, or, like, I would do, like, make, the, um, I remember a substitute teacher called me stupid once, because, yeah, um, I was starting to have some trouble in school, but, um, I, um, so anyways, um, yeah, I just remember, like, I don't think my, I don't remember much about my stepdad other, other than, um, one time when we went to get ice cream, I was very picky about my ice cream. I liked, I got three flavors and I wanted them in the correct order, like chocolate on bottom, not on top. And I didn't, I wouldn't eat my ice cream if it wasn't in the correct order. So, um, I, I started crying or getting upset because I didn't want, they put my ice cream in the correct order so that they, so my mom, I got put out in the car and I just remember he stuck his tongue out at me and this is a random, really random memory, <laughs> but it's a memory I have. I don't really remember much about him, um, other than I think yelling, he got mad when we would leave the bathroom door open or close, I don't remember which one, but I guess it wasn't any sort of close relationship that I, I don't have contact with him to this day, but, um, anyways, so when I, um, turned 10, so about a few years later, they got, um, divorced, my mom and my stepdad, and, um, we moved down to Morgan, Utah. So, um, I had, like, a really good friend that lived next door to me, and then I think I had a, a, a guy, a friend that was a little younger than me, because we lived in a, um, a apartment complex. I, we, me and my friend that lived next door, like, like, like to make up songs. Um, I wanted to perform them, but she was in front of people, but she was hesitant. Um, she didn't want to, but, um, yeah. People, people were mean to me in school. I don't know the distinction between mean and bullying. Apparently, there's a, they're separate things. But anyways, um, I, I don't really ever talk about that. But um, I did get that. I just feel like um, everyone did. Everybody called me annoying, and I don't know what. Um, the problem was, but the friends that I had were mean to me, like, my friends, I don't want to offend anyone, like, I should, like, if, because I'm friends on 
place to open now with. But, um, I don't know, kids can be mean, and, um, the friends I had were, um, pretty, they were supposedly my friends, but they were mean to me. Um, like, I just remember during lunch just leaving, because, like, I was very, like, loving, like, I would buy people things, like, um, um, like, at lunch, I remember I went to get, um, like, do you want, if they needed something, so I went to go get it, and then when I came back, they were, like, hiding part of my food. I know that sounds stupid right now, but I just remember that, and I, they were just mean to me, and I would just, I just ran and start crying, um, but anyways, they would, like, they played a game, um, follow, get in a line and follow each other to the fence, and then they would ditch me. Um, I know it sounds stupid, but I mean, when you're a kid, things like that hurt you. Um, one girl said if I wanted to be her friend, I had to eat dirt. And I know it sounds stupid now, but, um, I just, I was sensitive and it hurt me that people were not kind. I forgive these people and I don't want to be like focus on the past and what they and focus on that because I remember to this day this one girl that I was I said some mean things to and I regret it to this day and feel bad about doing that so if I want her to forgive me I need to forgive others and I do forgive um, them so I don't want to like focus on the past so I was when I was so I lived in those apartments till I was like 12 12 no or 13 and then I moved to in the same town to a house which I lived into till I moved down on my own so until I was 20 so I had a friend that lived across the fence from me. The, the really, the friend that I remember that was like actually nice to me, her name is Julie, we're friends on Facebook. But we got in a lot of trouble together so I wasn't allowed to hang out with her because we got in a lot of trouble together. Oh, I'm so agitated now because my cat started licking out of his water bottle. Started licking out of his water. Um, I would visit and go up and visit my dad um and like every like I think summer and Christmas with my brother and I just remember he was he was nice and he liked to like talk and um he likes to talk like we have like conversations intelligent conversations and he had two kitties named Kato and Taz um and Taz was really um really fat really fat she was a tabby and he called her little girl anyways so we would go visit him so yeah I just remember him always he was always nice and but when I was 11 when I was 11, my brother was upset, and I'm not saying this is justified or this is not how I see things, but my brother was upset that my dad wouldn't initiate um, us going to see him. So he's Anyways, my brother stopped, stopped going to see him, um, and I didn't want to go without my brother, so, um, that was the last time I've, I, that I went to see him, and when I was, um, like, how old, um, I think I was, I had to be older than 11 because I have pictures of us and I was older than 11 in the pictures maybe I was like 13 that's weird I always thought it was 11 but in the pictures I am not I'm like I think I was like 13 the last time I saw him when I was 
I forgot to, to mention this. When I was 10 or 11 is when my eating disorder started. And I thought I was really, I thought I was fat and I was skinny. I was like 80 pounds because I was like 10. But I thought I was fat. So that's when my eating disorder started. Um, I was very severely bulimic um, when I lived in there from when I was like, I don't remember the exact ages. I went to three different treatment centers for my eating disorder and they all failed. I all failed in them because I didn't want to get better. And um, I had a, was having a hard time at home. Um, how things were at home, I was having a hard time, and, um, so I actually kind of liked going to the treatment centers, because I was, like, around a bunch of girls, and it was kind of fun, but I didn't let any of them know that, but I, I have friends from there, and despite, I mean, it's like, they, um, you have an eating disorder, but there, you can't have it, like, and they, you have to eat, so, which is nice because I like eating. <laughs> but, like, um, so you have to eat, but then, and you can't throw up, so I'm not, like, tortured by my disorder when I'm there. And, um, we get three, three meals a day and, like, two snacks, two or three snacks. Um, and, anyways, it, it's kind of, it was... I have good memories of it, um, even though I'm sure parts of it were hard, um, I just usually have think good things about it, um, but, and I didn't like the fact that they made me gain weight and stuff, but, um, yeah, so, and I was hospitalized, um, a few times um, when I was a teenager because my potassium got so low from um, throwing up and things and one time um, the doctor said I almost died um, so and because I was now malnourished I would get a feeding tube and stuff when I first like went to my first treatment center since I didn't really have any friends or anybody that liked me at school I was just like so happy and um, that there was girls that actually liked me and that I had as friends so that's like one happy thing I from going to treatment centers is I was able to learn that I had a little bit of worth and that I was likable and that people there wasn't something terribly wrong with me and that I made friends and people liked me um, so, and were nice to me, um, so, yeah, I'm just, um, that's one thing that I'm, like, because I, I just felt horrible about myself that I didn't, like, have friends and that people didn't like me, so, um, that's, uh, that was a positive, um, yeah, I made a good friend, one of the good friends I made when I was at my first treatment center, her name was Paris, and it was really sad because she would lay on the floor and have flashbacks because her stepdad would r rape her, if I'm recalling right, um, in my brain, so it was really, really sad. So anyways, when I was... 20 and I still had my eating disorder, I moved out to this house, this condo that I'm in right now on my own. That was not good for my eating disorder because it got, that was this, I got the skinniest that I ever was, um, when I was, um, here down to 87 pounds and I'm 5'4". Because I was like alone and I could just like do things, so, um, yeah, um, I'll make another video maybe about more about my eating disorder. I just remember like I would binge at night. This is at one point I would binge every night and then fall asleep on my kitchen table and then wake up in the morning 
and throw up the rest of the watery crap, watery whatever was in my stomach. And um, surprisingly, I didn't go above 110 pounds doing that. Um, but I remember waking up one morning and I had this huge bruise at the back of my leg. Um, like a huge, it was a huge bruise um, on the back of my leg from doing that. But um, I would just, yeah, I, w I was not social at all. Like I didn't do Facebook. Um, I don't remember when Facebook started exactly, but um, I wasn't social. I would just come home with my and um, do my eating disorder, um, binging and purging. Yeah, that was just my life. My life was starving myself and um, buying a bunch of food and eating it and throwing up. And then I would watch TV <laughs> while I do it. Didn't have a social life at all, like at all. Um, that is what I would do um, all the time. I was abused growing up and like it really, um, I feel like it really affected me. It just hurts when you want to be loved growing up and instead you're abused and treated like trash and like you're a piece of trash and not a human. Um, just a piece of trash. It hurts when you just want to be loved and know that you're a valuable person and that you're loved and you have worth. Um, not that you're just a piece of garbage. Like, I forgive. I actually um, didn't finish high school. I got, um, I started getting F's and everything. I just, like, I remember sitting down to do my homework and I couldn't concentrate um, on anything. And so I, I didn't finish high school, but later when I was 23 or something, I got my GED. Um, which was pretty easy for me to get that. I didn't even study a huge amount, but, um, I feel like, I feel kind of like, um, less than people because now these days college is such like a big thing and you're like not, you're not like not a good person or smart person if you don't go to college. Now it's like, it didn't used to be this way, but it's like, if you don't go to college, you're not, like my friends were talking about like, if they even want to date somebody if they didn't go to college but for me it's just like I can't concentrate it's very it would be it's very hard for me to I have a horrible memory if you ever listen to me try to sing songs I can't remember anything so um it's like I'm not less of a person because I didn't go to college but I feel like that sometimes like that's how our society now like I know it's a great thing to go to college but it's like, don't like, look down on people if they don't like, and say they're not good enough, um, if they didn't go to college. Um, so, yeah, because sometimes I, I feel like that. So, um, I just feel like our society does that now, like, um, um, like if you didn't go to college, you're just not good enough or you're not you didn't succeed you failed at life or you're not good enough unless you go to college when you have mental illnesses and things it's harder so oh and when I was 16 is when I got Puff the dog that I have now is when I got him now he's almost he's gonna be 12 in February so, um, yeah, I love him. Um, the pets that I had before that, I didn't, I had bunnies. Um, I had bunnies and a hamster growing up. Um, he was the first dog and he's mine, so, um, he's a little white Maltese. Anyways, when I was 22 is when my schizophrenia started and bipolar, um, and that's when everything um, when it's horrible, it's like the hardest, it was, 
it was oh, so horrible um but then there were also really amazing parts of it the good hallucinations so that's when I went crazy um when I was 22 and um I had never talked I haven't talked about this in my other video but um one thing I was inspired to do um and I started going back to church because throughout I I was kind of inactive like I didn't really I wasn't really real active in my church at all so at this time I started praying again and going back to church and everything and um, um, at one point I was inspired and I uh, you know and I saw it much differently with my dad like I love him and I don't blame him like um, say oh you never initiated um, calling me or anything throughout all these years because he probably just thought you know well maybe they don't like me or just like um, m maybe like you know just thoughts like um, I don't know how to explain it just maybe they don't like me or something like just like he he was always loving and never didn't like me or was one of those dads that say horrible things and don't like you but um we, so anyways um I got inspired to um when I was this is when I was sick with the schizophrenia but um I got inspired to um start I wanted to get back in contact with him so I could maybe like go we could have a relationship again and so I started calling him on the phone and the first time I remember we talked I think he was like thinking I called him for money or something um, and I'm just like no and um, I just wanted to you know talk so anyways I called him and we talked and there was stuff going on with my grandpa like I think my grandpa had just died my his dad and my grandpa because he had like a something wrong with his brain started bleeding so we talked about that because apparently in the hospital they should have done something that they didn't do so anyways um anyways so we would talk and I was I was thinking about going up there he lives in um Washington state so and I was thinking of going up there to see him but I had gained weight from the antipsychotics that I've been on um and so I didn't want him to see me like that so I was gonna wait until I lost some weight but um, a few months after we'd been talking we'd talk every once in a while like in the, within this time that I started talking to him um, I just I struck I called him and I kept calling him and he wouldn't pick up and I told my mom I'm like I think there is something wrong because he's not picking up his phone and I just felt like something was wrong and she's like oh no he's fine so then a little bit later a week or so later I come home to my mom sitting in my house I believe and she's like um your dad um committed suicide and I just started crying um so I think it's not as hard on me, uh, besides, it's not as hard as me given that we didn't have like a huge relationship all these years. It would be harder if we did have a bigger relationship, but I don't hold any anger towards him for that. Um, he had a lot of, I think, depression and um, he was in a lot of pain with his body. And then his electricity just got shut off. He wrote this. He wrote that in his suicide note. Um, he was, so I don't, you know, I just hope he's happy now and in a better place. And I hope when in the next life um, we can, I'll be able to see him again and we can hopefully be friends. Um, and um, so I love him and um, I don't hold any grudges or anything towards him and don't blame him like say it's your fault for not calling me when you know I could have called him so and he it's not 
it's I'm not so I don't place blame on him anymore and I'm just very grateful that I got to start I got to um that I got to talk to him before he died so it wasn't like it wasn't 10 years and then I wasn't able to talk to him so I'm just very grateful I was able to talk to him and on his um he wrote a, a suicide note <coughs> and on the first thing on the note he put is tell Brie I love her so um that was just really sweet um, I went up to Washington for his funeral, and I kind of, he, he loved cats, like me, <laughs> and, um, he had taken care of my grandma that she passed on, I don't remember the timeline of everything, but my grandma as well as my grandpa had passed on, and, um, I feel like they had a kitty that I'm, I was thinking I am taking the kitty, but then I didn't. But, um, anyways, I feel like, um, sometimes I don't have as much emotion as some people about things. But anyways, so, when I was in the hospital, I went to the hospital, you could either identify it as three or four times, because the second time I went, I was in a hospital, I went to, like, a place that you, um, is less intensive, that you're supposed to, before you like go home I think anyways I didn't take my meds and got worse with the schizophrenia and then I got sent back to the hospital so you can I guess I can count that as two because or one but anyways um so while I have a whole video about my schizophrenia so I don't really need to go into that um a lot but um while I was in the hospital my grandma that she lived in the same condos as me. She used to live in Provo, the one I told you about, but she um, moved to just that way, maybe, in the same condos as me. And I would, I would go and make her dinner and bring it over to her and um, things like that. And she was sweet. So, but when I was in the hospital, she passed away. From I I don't even know, I, an aneurysm maybe um, in her stomach that burst. So, but uh, my mom they told at the hospital they told my mom not to tell me, so she didn't tell me till I get out. But like I said, I don't have I don't know if it's I have a connection problem to people or something, but I, I didn't take it like or I just and I have faith that I'll see him again or I just. I, um, I don't have, like, a huge reaction to when people die. I don't know what that is, um, exactly. But, um, my grandpa, um, so my mom's dad, he died when I was, oh. I don't know, it was, maybe, I was in my teenager's years, I think. But, um... So, actually, my great-grandma, which is my dad's mom's, or dad's, anyways, my great-grandma on my dad's side, she outlived all my grandparents, um, but she just died maybe a couple years ago or something. Sorry, I'm bad timeline. My dad died twin, four, four years ago? But anyway, she lived out, she lit, outlived all my um, grandparents, but she passed on now. Yeah, I feel like I'm talking about all the bad things, but anyways, I started my business when I was like 22. I've had it for six or seven years now, my pet grooming business, so that's good. That's a positive. Um, I love animals. So now I have, um, three wonderful kitties, Aslan, Edward, and Liam and a little ferret Thor and then my newest addition my little puppy patches that I love so much I love all my animals but so much but um yeah so um I, I love having a bunch of animals to keep me comfy and snuggle with and my dog um Puff he's a good watchdog so if anybody um 
it's outside or so if he hears anything um he will um bark to alert me so that's good now that i am steady on my medication i'm a lot hundred times better than i was when i had when i was off my medication even though i have stability problems still um but um, I'm just grateful the meds work for me now. And I go to the temple, and I go to church, and I visit my family, even though I have a hard time talking to people, but, um, which just kind of upsets me, because, um, I don't really have a close or connection relationship with um, my brothers or and I just see like other siblings that have such a close relationship and wish I could have that but I I have a hard time connecting I don't know that's just how I view it at the moment because uh, I just have a hard time talking and then I just don't form that connection because um, I have a hard time talking to people when me and my brother were little, we I believe I we had fun together, and I believe we had a more close relationship when we were like little kids, like when I was like five and he was eight. I think we're three years different because there's a lot of picture of us like hugging and playing together. So um, I don't know what happened when we were we were close when we were younger. My other brother. Um, is like 15 years older than me. He's actually my half brother, so he has a different dad um, than me and my other brother. So, um, yeah, that's why, um, yeah, there's a big age gap there, but, um, so, um, he didn't really live at home with us, um, that I can let only when I was like really little so I don't remember that much hopefully maybe in the next life when I'm healed of everything I'll maybe be able to have a closer relationship with my family members the closest one I am to is my mom um but um so now I've reconnected with a lot of people on Facebook that I went to the treatment centers with um, the second, for some reason, I don't think I have any friends on Facebook, and I've looked for some uh, from the second treatment center I went to. Um, but I have a lot from the first and the last. Um, the first one was Ramuda in Arizona. The second one was Center for Change in Provo. And the last one was Avalon Hills in Logan, Utah. So, and they all, uh, probably everyone, I'm sorry, like, if any of the people that were in charge texts um I have a few friends on here that were at like I was a horrible patient I didn't want to follow the rules and or anything so I apologize for that I'm not like that anymore but so I just went into specific things that's happened in my life if I went and said every detail of my life story that would take a long time so, um, I'm grateful for my life and I'm grateful for what I've been through because it makes me a more compassionate, it'll make me a more compassionate person. I'll be able to learn and grow, um, from my trials and, um, and I know that one day in heaven everything will be made fair and everything will be made right so it's even though I feel unjustified um, I know that everything will be um, made right um, because everything will be made fair so I'm very grateful for all my many blessings so even though I've had a hard life well I'm so very grateful for Heavenly Father and I know it's with him I was able to overcome my eating disorder before I started praying going back to church and relying on God and having faith in him 
I thought some I thought something was wrong with me and I didn't want to get better from my eating disorder and I thought I could never get better and with him I've been able to now want recovery and um, be in recovery with the strength from him um, even though I'm kind of having a problem with um, weight gain of, as of late um, but I'm so grateful because um, without him that wouldn't be possible it was him that helped me um, even after all those treatment centers it was um, God essentially that helped me with my eating disorder so I'm I know I'm blessed that I have the things that I've had um, that I live in um, that I don't live in a third world country I have a nice bed I have a house to live in I have I had a nice father and um, I have a mother that does a lot for me and um, helps me a lot and she's helped me a lot through my illness and she's made sure that I haven't gone to jail because if I had a different mother or anyone else I'm pretty sure I could have ended up in um, jail um, because yeah and she's made sure that they took care of me um, that I didn't go to jail or um, so um, that's positive so I've had a lot of blessings and I'm blessed to have Christ in my life and I'm blessed to um, not have a physical disability um, that my body's healthy and I'm blessed that I live in America. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in a lot of ways. So I, I have a lot to be grateful for. Um, I'm blessed that I have a warm bed to sleep in and that I have a job that I can is so flexible and I can take off when I want and um, for just um, so I have a lot of blessings to be grateful for. Um, and um, I've had a lot of good things in my life as well. Sorry if I just talked about all the bad things. Um, I just talked about what is in my memory at the moment. Thank you all so much for listening to my life story. The thing, anyways, the parts of it that I told. Um, and thank you all so much for watching my videos and for liking and subscribing. And if you haven't yet subscribed, you can go ahead and do that. And thank you all so much for um, watching my videos and for your kind comments. And um, sometimes I have a hard time like giving when people ask me things or uh, hard giving it's hard for me to give like really in-depth or answers but I thank you all so much for the kind comments you give me um so thank you all so much for watching and I love you all and God bless